this started. Who wants to go first? Now we've got to tell you the most important part. We have to stand up That's all in the microphone. Go. Okay. works in the kitchen and she says she likes when the um, when the people come and interact and um, when they feel helpful and then one that works with the autistic she's an autistic aide and she says she just likes uh, making them happy and then the rest of us are in a cottage and we just like um, you know making sure they're happy pleased and that you know things are going their way and basically they have fun while they're here you know and come. Awesome, good job. Now, who okay, wants to go next? Oh, somebody like Dave over here. Hang on. There you go. We decided we'd like to get compassion, showing our individual compassion, and giving them the best quality care that we can. Awesome, good job. Who's next? Wanda. <laughs> Come on now. They just gotta say, oh, yeah, they can make say middle. Middle. Uh, I gotta skid on now. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just like seeing him smile, you know, like, you know, Charlie, he smiles all the time. Bobby smiles. Yeah. Seeing people smile, that's good. Yeah. I'm not calling Chad out back there, but he hasn't gone yet. Oh, hey, hang on. No, yeah, you yeah, do. No. You gotta get the full experience, man. So, out of our group, uh, atmosphere, you know, what we do here, how uh, the people uh, pay, making sure their paychecks are correct, right? We don't want any of you all to do that. Let's go, guys. So, uh, keeping things on time, paying. Uh, growth. So the growth that we are uh, doing here in a whole of this facility is, is, is outstanding. And then basically everything that the uh, products needed. So, so. Good job. Awesome. Have I forgotten anybody? Where's anybody hiding from me? 
Oh, somebody's pointing over here.
So there's a difference between being person-centered and thinking in a person-centered way. Does that make sense? And too often, we hear about being short-staffed, getting in the way of us thinking in a person-centered way. Well, how many of y'all have been here more than 10 years? Raise your hands. All right. Yeah, almost close enough. Yeah, I'm how many of you ever seen us here at all for one day when we were fully stacked? Yeah. Did you get the point now? It's kind of normal, isn't it? So is that truly an excuse to not think in a person-centered way? No. So what we're going to do is have whoever wants to address this issue to write upon a wall what barriers prevent us from just thinking in a person-centered way. Another question would be, in what ways has one of the philosophy changed you? Our mission? It's easy to read it. But what does that mean to you personally? And of the values of Wendell Foster, and here's a hint from the back of your name badge. The values of Wendell Foster, which ones do your department reflect the most? And why? And my favorite, why should we be person centered? What's the point? So all what you do is go in, get out of our chairs, grab a marker, they've got plenty of markers floating around, find one area you want to contribute to, and go ahead and write it down. Tara and
She's not her head big. Little foster has changed west. I'm not the same person at all. It's actually kind of a middle of the up quite a bit. Karen can pray to test it out too, can't you, Karen? Show of hands. Who that's in here has been changed by Wendell Foster? Yeah. How many of you have ever worked burgers at a restaurant? Been a cashier at Walmart, Kroger, or somewhere, because I stupid people with toys all the time? Yeah. <laughs> How many of you ever worked a job you just can't stand and hate going every day? Yet yeah, we get to work at a place that changes us for the better. Oh, yeah. You can't find that everywhere. You can only get so excited about flipping a burger, really. And we can get excited about all we do every day. It doesn't really, it doesn't get better than that. So, when the progress taught me that we're all the same, just a bit different songs. Be more patient with others. Every single individual can communicate their needs and they have to learn the way to see it. More patience. And now focus more on what people can do instead of what they can't do. To be open minded. To always show your compassion that there are different ways to demonstrate it. It's taught me to have a bigger heart. It's made me more caring and open minded. To better understand people with disabilities. I put the same value in everyone's lives now. I realize we all have purpose and dreams. It's expanded my skills on empowering people to their highest potential. It helped me to be more patient and realize that it's important to be attentive. Before I worked here, I was comfortable. Okay, who wrote a yellow? Come on now. <laughs> Okay, I wasn't comfortable with them, know a lot about people with disabilities. And now I love the people who live here and truly see them that they were just like me. Oh wow, that's cool. Do you think that people in society see people with disabilities the same way we do? No. no. That's good. And now my focus there are thinking. What are the barriers to prevent us from thinking in a certain way? Negativity. Laziness. Our own natural thinking, uh, and we need to start thinking outside the box. This next one is very important. Stress at home. Bring the stress with us to work. Who here is ever about stressing? Yeah. Never, right? You lie. It's true, though, it happens. It is a very Big use to the same routine, working too much, not enough staff, transportation, or money to let people do what they would like, bad or old habits. Last one, seriousness. Some people do not want change to take place. And here's the thing who wants change to happen? Raise your hand. Good. When are you going to do it? That's right. Say it loud. Shout it out. Now. That's right. Now. Be the change agent. If you want change to happen, make it happen. It can be something very tiny or very big. Whatever you do, do it. Do the best of your ability, and then spread the word about it. Because other people will be eager to get excited to hear stories, and they want to be part of it. But if we're truly going to change here and live by our mission, vision, and values and be person centered, it starts with each one of us. To break out our little habits and to realize that we all have a balance of life that's important to and important for, don't we? I'm always telling that story in orientation about my cholesterol. It really is that bad. Years ago, I went to the VA about it. They said, oh my gosh, you've got to go on a diet and start working out. I looked at them and I said, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I like my Cheetos. I like my Oreos. I like my chocolate ice cream the fudge. No. And year after year, I go back to VA the and they keep giving me this book saying, seriously, you're going to have the issues later on in life. I don't care. I'm young. It don't matter. It's not the forefront of my mind. I like 
can go to Menards, get that big old thing of cheese balls on a Friday and say, challenge accepted for the weekend. I can do this. Eat the whole thing. Yeah, y'all laugh. I don't like that you don't do that. But who here knows what's changed me? Who remembers this story? My wife. Because this time last year, we had an event here at Wendell Foster where we can save money on health insurance by having screening. Those of you that know me, I am cheap and I love to save money. It means I can do more hobbies. I'm all about that. So I take the screening. Y'all, I'm on the head here. Tell me what. So I take the screening. And the lady looks at me, she's like, oh my gosh. Your low cholesterol is barely there. Your high cholesterol is off the chart. I was kind of proud of that. I've been working on that for years. Thank you very much. I took the paper she gave me, put it in my pocket, went home, and do what most guys do when they get home. Very cold on the floor. Wife's doing laundry. What does she buy in my pockets? <coughs> yeah. It was a few minutes later, I hear her say, Wes! We got a talk! Next day, I have not choked. I had a choke on the show. And it's very easy to here. What changed me? Yeah, I care a lot, whole lot more about her than the VA, don't I? That's the secret of all this. We can live a life here where things are important for us and to us, but we need to let people find their own balance. And if we give them time and information and space, they'll find that balance for themselves, won't they? Like we do in our lives. I think that's the key to all this, thinking a person in a way is just to realize that they're Everybody's the same. No matter if you lose or not. We all have a balance of life we must achieve. Now for the last one, why should we be person centered? Who wrote this? The blue one on the top. That's awesome. It is not our life. It's theirs. It's like you're reading my mind or something. It's very good. To help the people who live here live the life you want and also do the activities they want. It allows you to focus on them and not yourself. Helps them to achieve goals so they can have independence. They can stay occupied and not get bored if people do get bored here. To help people achieve goals and give them more options, it's not about us, it's about them and helping them make the most out of their lives. To help others find out who they are. And I always like to sum it up as it's the right thing to do, isn't it? If we're going to make change happen, let's start today and make it happen. Think to yourselves, if you had to live here, how happy would you really be? I'm not talking about with disabilities. I'm talking about now this is home, every single day, would you be happy? If not, cool. what are you going to do to fix it? Now, we're on the right track to get out here early, so bear with me. Congratulations to John Malay, Crystal Thompson, Debbie Randolph, and John Gleason. They are now a new person center trainer, trainers here at Woodrow Foster. We have six people now. State of Kentucky has eight total. Yeah. Six years ago, they had zero. So how awesome is that? So we're starting to get a footprint on this now. And congratulations to our new person center coaches that just completed their training. They went through about 42, 43 hours of training with me. And they were reviewing all the person center skills, <coughs> the concepts are coming out, such as trauma-informed care, life trajectory, people playing together. So when you see them, just congratulate them, because they'll tell you it was tough, and they with me, and my ideas all the time. And we also had a lady there named Aaron Davis. She is from Evansville. She's a person center trainer and heard about the good things we're doing here. So she wanted to see what it was like, see what the coaches trained was like, so I gave her a free seat. She's now going to join our community practice. So, person center thinking is spreading beyond Wendell Foster. Very exciting stuff. There's just some of the skills that they went through. I try not to bore them too much. At the end of the day, they're bringing the person to good. And now to the best part of this insert. Everybody's favorite. Oh, shot. Good stuff. Slip the trick to fall. 
All right, so show of hands. Who here has ever slipped or failed window costume? Raise your hands. Yeah. You better raise your hand. Who here has ever tripped over a speed bump? Oh, I know I'm not the only one. That last orientation, there were like 12 people in here jumping up saying me. Or what about the manhole cover where the concrete slopes down into it? I made these bunch of coffee with tripping over that once. Yeah. It happens, doesn't it? The stools. Who here has ever tripped over or almost fallen out of one of the stools in the dining room here? Barely quite a few people. It happens. Those things are deadly. They stick up behind them and not look at them. And the maintenance man that put me in on the course for the beds, he kind of changed down the motor. He had to watch out for the course and he tripled them all the time. So, <coughs> the job is going to be. What can you do? Well, the first thing is be prepared. Know where you're at, what floor signs are. How many of you have ever slipped on the floors in the bathroom because they're wet? Almost every DSP, they raise your hands on that one. It happens all the time. They never dry out, do they? Never. So, with floor signs and cleaning up a mess as you see it. You know, let's say a few weeks ago, somebody had uh, dropped a pot of coffee in the break room. It might have been a months ago. A nurse found it. Pot shattered on the floor, coffee everywhere. She cleaned it up anyway, so she didn't make the mess. That's what we need to do here. And if we did make the mess, we need to make sure we clean it up. If you need help, just ask help. Right up there, I'll help you out, no problem. And, don't be this guy. Don't be this guy. What's he doing up there? Yeah. Because this may happen. <laughs> Come on now. And he wasn't hurting me, I just promise. But, how I many of you have ever been on your phone and ran into something? Yeah. So be careful with your phones. Make sure you're aware of what's going on around you. Chad, you're going to appreciate this one. <laughs> Ladder safety. Make sure you maintain three points of contact at all times. You have two, hand, two hands and two feet. So, use three out of four to make sure you're touching something at all times when you're on the ladder. And if you're doing any kind of work like that, go ahead and take off the area to keep people out so nobody gets hurt. And then if you do have an incident that happens that does not result in an injury, we're going to call it a near miss. Sometimes those things happen. Make sure you tell your supervisor. Because if it didn't involve an injury now, it could the next time. We'd rather not that uh, to prevent it so that doesn't happen. So let us know. All we're going to do is take care of the issue. We just want to know about it. Now, who here knows what causes hepatitis A? Disgusting, isn't it? When fecal matter enters your mouth. Ooh. And how do you think that could happen? Anybody? Not washing your nasty hands, right? This can also and is frequently spread at restaurants. You'll be able to use your badge to get in. 
and you can bring a badge with you every single day that you work. So you can get access to these doors. And if it happens where you need access to a building and you don't have it, your supervisor knows. We'll see what we can make happen. Oh, that's on a test. Make sure your badge is with you. You have to have it to go through. Not a trick question. And as with all new things we do, there are going to be hiccups. We know how that happens. So please let us know when, whenever we need to change something with this. We'll look at it and see what we can tweak. Be gentle with us, please. Finally, the Wendell Cluster auction is coming up September 8th. Who's going to be there? Show of hands. I'm going to be lonely there, huh? Well, you can always volunteer. Yeah, I know, but I think I'm gone. We can change the schedule. You're going to call my professors for me? Yeah, I sure will. <laughs> Don't put me on me. So, we are taking any and all volunteers. If you want to work at this event or know somebody that does, Mark Atkins is your point of contact. Please let him know. Also, for every item that's donated to the auction, there is a piece of paper that must be filled out. And on that paper, we'll list what the item is. If you donate it, the average dollar amount of this item. And some other information I just can't think of right now. But here's, here's the thing. This paper is located at Betty's desk. You don't even have to ask Betty for it. Look at the desk area. You'll see it right there. Pick it up. Fill it out. Turn it in by Friday. And what's the date? What day of week is this? <laughs> Today's Wednesday, so we got two days to make this happen by. So please, please, please don't come to them on Monday saying, oops, let's take care of it before Friday ends. Any questions? Awesome. Thank you, Ms. Oh, please leave your papers on the table. I'll put the letter on you. That's